Hey everybody, we're in video two of a video series on game theory, and in this video we're still just in the introductory level, right? Introduction part two, hopefully it's above my head, you can see it right there. That's all we're doing is doing some introduction to some basic concepts. Now, before I get going, once again, what is game theory? Game theory is the study of how people behave when faced with interdependencies. Basically how people, entities, organizations behave when faced with interdependent situations. Now, what's an interdependent situation? It's a situation where the outcomes of one player are not just based on their own decisions, their own strategies, but also the outcomes that they get are also based on the decisions and strategies of others. And the opposite is true. The outcome of others, their payoffs, are not just based on their own decisions and strategies, but also the decisions and strategies of other players in the game. That interdependencies exist, okay? Now, for this particular video, we're just going to talk about how to set up some games. In this particular game, we're going to have a simultaneous play game, where both strategies are going to be executed at the same time. But I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, because I haven't told you the key elements of all games, and that's what this video is all about. So here they come. The three key elements of all games. All games have players, at least two. All games have strategies those players can follow, and all games have payoffs, okay? So all games have players, strategies, and payoffs. Now, what is the game that we're going to be looking at? The game we're going to be looking at is a particular situation in soccer, or football to the rest of the world. But since we're in the United States, I'm just going to use the term soccer. And this particular situation that exists in soccer that we're going to be looking at is the penalty kick. And in the penalty kick, we're going to be looking at the kicker and the goalie. So we're going to have two players, just two players, the kicker and the goalie. And we're going to basically say that each player has three strategies that they can follow. Now, if you want to get into this, you might you know, quibble with what I'm about to say. But just in general, especially for this particular video, we're just going to say three strategies for each player. The kicker, they can kick left, kick middle, or kick right. Okay, So the kicker, there's the player, can execute one of these three strategies, kick left, kick middle, or kick right. The goalie also has three strategies they can execute. They can jump to their right, stay in the middle, or jump to the left. So there's the goalie, a player, right? And here's their strategies. They can jump left, stay in the middle, or jump to the right. Again, this is a simultaneous play game. And the reason that is, is the distance between the ball and the goal is very short. So basically, they're both going to have to execute their strategy at the same time. In other words, the goalie cannot wait until the kicker kicks the ball to execute their strategy. If they wait to see which way the ball is going and then execute their strategy, jump right or left based on where the ball is going, they're going to not be able to get there in time because this distance is so short. And generally, we're going to be saying that ball is kicked at a pretty good rate of speed. So again, simultaneous play game, the kick and the jump happen at the same time. And, well, again, actually, they don't have to jump. They can just stay middle. But anyhow, they have to execute their strategy when the ball is kicked. Now, we've got to get to the payoff matrix, okay? So we're going to fill in the payoff matrix now. And here's what we're basically going to say. If the kicker kicks the ball in the goal, kicker gets a point, or a util, if you will, and from a utility standpoint, and the goalie gets zero. Now, if the goalie saves it, if the goalie blocks the ball from going in, we're going to say the kicker gets a point, or a util, if you will, and the kicker gets nothing, okay? So remember, when I say the kicker, or sorry, the goalie gets a point if they save it, they don't really get a point. We all know that, but they get like a util. It's a positive. It's a positive payoff for them. So let's go ahead and fill this out. Kicker kicks left. Goalie jumps left. Now you might think, okay, goalie's going to block it. Mm, nope. We're doing these strategies from each player's perspective. So we've got the kicker. They're kicking left. If the goalie jumps to their left, that ball is going into the back of the net. And so the kicker gets a point. Nothing for the goalie. Okay? Kicker kicks left. Goalie stays in the middle. Kicker kicks left. Goalie stays in the middle. Ball's going to the back of the net. Kicker gets a point. Nothing for the goalie. But if the kicker kicks left and the goalie jumps right, kicker kicks left, goalie jumps to their right, guess what? There we go. The goalie's actually going to get the util, if you will, the point, right? So, there's the first situation, the first row filled out. We can probably go a lot faster now, right? Kicker kicks middle, goalie jumps left, kicker is going to get the point, nothing for the goalie. 
Kicker kicks middle, goalie stays in the middle, mm, the goalie is going to block that one. So that goes to the goalie, and then finally kicker kicks middle, goalie jumps to the right, kicker gets the point, nothing for the goalie. Now, kicker kicks right, goalie jumps left, remember kicker kicks to their right, goalie jumps to their left, goalie's going to save it, so point goalie, nothing for the kicker, but then of course the next two, kicker's going to get the point, nothing for the goalie, kicker's going to get the point, nothing for the goalie. There you go, we filled out the payoff matrix. Again, three components to all games. All games have players, strategies, and payouts. This is a simultaneous play game. Now, here's the deal. In this particular game, there's no dominant strategy, which we'll be talking about in the next video, and there's no Nash equilibrium, which we'll be talking about in a couple videos from now. But I still want to do a little bit of investigation of this game, just a little bit of some things that are interesting. And there are a lot of interesting things about this scenario. Lots of stuff has been analyzed. Whether, you know, is the kicker ahead or behind and how they behave, and is the goalie ahead or behind and how they behave, whether or not it's a penalty kick in the normal course of the game, which is just a single kick, or well, whether or not the game has been tied and now we're into overtime and now we're uh, having five kicks to both teams to settle the game. How the two players behave changes a lot. There's a lot of psychology to this. But I'm just going to leave you just with this one insight that I think is pretty interesting. What is the best strategy, as proven out by the data, for the kicker? Kick left, middle, or right? What has proven to be the most successful when done? What has the highest percentage of success? And I think you might guess it. It's kick in middle. That's right. Kick in middle has the highest rate of success for the kicker. Now, staying in the middle is not the highest rate of success for the goalie, but kicking middle has the highest rate of success. Now, why is that? Because what is the goalie pretty much never going to do? They're never going to stay in the middle. And why aren't they going to stay in the middle? It gets back to that psychology, right? You're a goalie, ball's kicked, and you don't do anything. You stay middle, that ball goes right or left. That's not going to look good for you, right? If, even, if, even if you jump the opposite way, at least you're trying. You're exerting energy. You are hitting the dirt, right? So goalies, man, the last thing they want to do is have a ball kicked, go to their right or their left, and they do nothing. So pretty much goalies are almost always going to jump left or right. They almost never stay middle. And since they almost never stay middle, the kicker who does kick middle has the highest success rate. Now, Kickers kick middle a lot? Heck no, right? They kick left or right most of the time. Now, every once in a while, that kicker might kick middle. But here's the problem. Why do they not want to kick middle? Because the worst thing for a kicker is for them to kick middle, and that goalie stays in the middle and just catches that ball. That feels horrible to the kicker. The kicker kicks left, and that goalie jumps right and blocks it. Hey, you know what? I did the best I could. It was just a lucky jump by the goalie. They almost never kick middle, but when they do kick middle, they have the highest rate of success. Anyhow, again, don't forget the big key concepts of game theory. All games have players, all games have strategies, all games have payoffs, and in the next video, we'll be talking about what a dominant strategy is. We'll see you there.